there's a lot of confusion over the topic of Christian worship. So Emily asks about that. Let's see what the Bible says. Let's see if we can get this one. This is from Emily, who writes, Would you be able to, do, to talk about how to rightly understand Christian worship? This is what I'm confused by. A worldly understanding of worship teaches me that the worshiper is giving homage to the one being worshipped. But I think that Christian understanding is that Christ is giving us his gifts, but he is the one being worshipped. Hopefully the question makes sense. I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts. This is a gr- oh, three minutes. This is a great question when we talk about worship. Now, there's two ways to understand worship. Um, Philip Melanchthon in the Lutheran Confessions breaks it down for us very simply like this. There's the worship of the law, which is us giving thanks and praise to God, and there's the worship of the gospel, which is God giving us his gifts. So that the chief wor- so there's the worship of love and there's the worship of faith. There's the worship of giving, and there's the worship of receiving. Most people treat worship only as giving. What is worship? I'm standing before God, and I'm giving him my praise. I'm giving him my affection. I'm giving him the glory. I'm giving him these things. Now, that's true. That is part of worship, but it's, it's not the only part of worship, and it's not the chief part of worship. The chief part of worship is that the Lord Jesus is giving us his gifts, his mercy, his kindness, his love, his blood, his forgiveness, his promises, his smile, his kingdom, his spirit, all of these things. So that Jesus says, I am among you, not as one, I I did not come among you to be served, but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. In that text we were looking at at the very beginning of the show when Jesus is giving the Lord's Supper, he says, who's greater, the one that sits at the table or the one who serves? And yet I am among you as the one who serves. So the chief act of worship is Jesus coming to us to give us the gifts of salvation, his his promised forgiveness, the victory that he won for us on the cross. That's the chief and primary act of worship. And And then we react to that. We thank him and praise him and stand in awe of him, not only because of how strong he is, but because of how weak he is. Not only because he lives forever, but because he died on the cross. Not only because he created everything, but most especially because he redeemed us. He took on our flesh and blood and our sin to suffer in our place to give us the grace of God. And that is the chief understanding of the Christian form of worship. Thank you, Emily, for the question. Hey, this has been a lot of fun, taking your questions. If you've got more theological questions, you can can send them to me, wolfmuller.co, click the contact button, send the the questions, and maybe we'll do this again sometime. And while you're there, look at the the Verse of the Week video, a a new little Bible study that we're doing for the Verse of the Week. This is, well, this is Cross Defense. I'm your host, Pastor Brian Wolfmuller, coming at you every week, igniting, well, I hope, it's my prayer, that we're igniting your imagination with the truth of the Lord's Word. That, that, to know that, huh, that when the devil tries to tempt us to be bored with theology, man, that he's barking up the wrong tree with us because there's nothing more wonderful, more glorious, and more beautiful than the truth of our Lord Jesus, crucified and raised for us. Thanks for listening to Cross Defense. Talk to you again next week. God's peace be with you.